Can you explain it and explain how when they use it, they're not justified in doing so, but you are. Only the Orthodox Christian metaphysic, epistemology, and ethic can ground the transcendental categories that are the preconditions for any possible knowledge. What right. is the justification for the claim that the Orthodox position alone justifies the preconditions of intelligibility? Okay, Jay. Do you have an argument or justification for the claim that the Trinity and Orthodox uh, theology or the Orthodox Church specifically is a precondition for rationality, intelligibility, and all the other transcendental categories? Do you have an argument and justification for that? Yes. What is it? It's a two-parter. Can I, can I explain it? Yeah, go ahead. So the first part is that it's a reductio ad absurdum argument when you deny it. This is called retorsion in Aristotelian argumentation. And the second part of the argument is to posit the Christian worldview as the way to ground the transcendental categories that are the preconditions for all possible knowledge. Yeah, you're saying to posit them. But what's the justification for the claim that it is the only system that can account for those things. Is there, do you provide arguments or not? Retorsion, correct. The first, the first one is retorsion. Okay, explain what retorsion is. Do you know, you're Jake the Muslim metaphysician. You I know, know what it is, but I've actually seen in your, okay, what is it? I've actually seen in your videos. Okay, what is it? You, you're not asking me questions, I'm asking you questions. You've explained in your videos that you critique the Thomists when they bring up the issue of retorsion. So can you explain it and explain how when they use it, they're not justified in doing so, but you are? Because they're classical foundationalists like you, and it's a reductio argument. I'm not a classical foundationalist. Now, it's a reductio. You are. In the, you are. I'm, not, I'm not a classical foundationalist. You are. So you're going to tell me my own epistemology. I mean, the so, way you argued in the last no, uh, comment, I, I, the, in the last I'm section. Not, I'm not a classical foundationalist. The way now, you just argued. Again, I'm going to ask you. believe in self-evident truths. I'm going to ask you again, Jay. You believe in self-evident truths, so you're lying. I'm, I'm, I'm asking now you're lying you because you are I'm a asking, I'm, right, I'm asking let's, let's you questions, give, Jay. Yeah, I'm, I'm supposed to be asking him questions, just to be clear. Okay, Jay, again, I'm going to ask you, when you critique the Thomist, you're saying the only reason is because they're a classical foundationalist and you're not. How does that affect the legitimacy of them making the same move that you are? Because like you, they don't understand a meta-level argument. Okay, so why don't you explain it to us other than making a claim? I didn't make a claim. I said that the first part of the argument is reductio, a retorsion argument, showing the absurdity of that worldview. And then the second part of the argument is to show and argue that only the Orthodox Christian metaphysic, epistemology, and ethic can ground the transcendental categories that are the preconditions for any possible knowledge. Okay, so there's two parts to it, Jay. Let's deal right. with the first part. Does the first part alone give justification for the claim that the Orthodox theological positions are the only justification for the preconditions of intelligibility and all the other transcendental categories? No, all retorsion shows is that the other position is absurd. Okay, so it only shows that that position is absurd. So mm -hmm. that doesn't justify it. So the second part is, is positing the orthodox position. But that's right. the very thing that we're asking for. What is right. the justification for the claim that the orthodox position alone justifies the preconditions of intelligibility? Correct. So what is it? You're just restating the claim. You're not giving an argument. No, it's a, you're confusing a first order argument with a meta level argument. It's a category error. You keep saying I'm confusing and you're making right. claims, but then you're never giving any content to your claim. I just stated the content. You just don't understand it. No, I know. I do understand what you're saying. Okay, you what, just said, you just said. Then you should understand what a meta level a meta, argument is. You just said it's a meta right. level argument. Right. And I see here from your good friend, Anias, right? right? Father Deacon Anias, which I've read his paper and was very interesting, actually. Too bad you didn't uh, understand it. Yeah, too bad I didn't understand it. I mean, it was so terrible. He contradicts himself up and down on the same page. And he explicitly says that the tag argument to ask for a justification for positing the orthodox yeah. view is wrongheaded because it's prior to epistemology right. and argument. It's wrongheaded in the first order of reasoning. Okay, so then there is That's no my point. There is no justification no. by by the criterion. No, the by criterion, first order reasoning. By the criterion problem you were You're asking. Not by the criterion problem you were asking me about. Do you have a justification for the claim that the Eastern Orthodox position alone suffices for the grounding transcendentals? 
do you have a justification that meets the, the criterion of justification yeah. that you're asking? The first part is the absurdity of your worldview in our case, in this debate. And the second part is the coherence and the grounding work that the Orthodox Christian worldview does for things like universals, laws of logic, objective ethics, uh, identity over time. All those metaphysical pr uh, principles make sense in a world that's uh, where God is the creator. Okay, Jay, which is exactly what I said. So, uh, Jay, and the problem of orthodoxy in orthodoxy argument, does Alan Siegel, from your reading of his two powers in heaven, does he say that the two powers in heaven view is heretical? Yeah. Okay. Do Siegel and Boyorin consider the two powers in heaven view akin to Logos theology? Uh, they relate. I don't know if they'd be akin. Okay, they relate it. So, um, is Logos because theology... Because it goes back to Philo. Is, yeah, is Logos theology heretical according to Orthodox Christianity, meaning the theology of Philo? Is that heretical? Yeah, Philo's position would be binatarian. Okay. According to Boyorin, John Baer, and the Catholic Encyclopedia, was Justin Martyr a proponent of Logos theology or Orthodox Trinitarianism? Uh, I think that Justin had a form of Logos uh, theology and Trinitarianism. Okay. Is Justin Martyr a saint in the Orthodox Church? He is, and I we address this in the uh, Inspiring Philosophy stream, in all of your arguments. Is it permissible to pray to him? Uh, we ask for his intercession. Okay. So when he declares that Jesus is another God and says that the Son is a product of the Father's will, are those heretical positions? Uh, there's a There might be a lack of clarity there, but we already addressed this in the Inspiring Philosophy uh, stream. Is it heretical to believe that the Son is a product of the Father's will? Uh, there's probably some lack of clarity there if if it, that's uh, an authentic text, yeah. Is it heretical to believe that the Son is a product of the Father's will? Yeah, uh, if, if he means it in that sense, we would say it's wrong. Okay, is it heretical? It could be. Okay, so it's permissible to pray to uh, heretical saints, correct? Well, we don't automatically think that if somebody got something wrong, they're necessarily a heretic. I okay, mean, Augustine, he, made, he, he, he um, Augustine made many mistakes. Too. Many heresies? Well, a heresy is decided he to be He believed in the filioque, doctrine. right? Augustine believed in the filioque, right? Correct. Is that heresy? When it becomes known as a heresy, yes. Okay, so now it would be heretical to believe in that. That's what councils are for, correct. Okay, thank you very much. So um, do ethodies believe in divine simplicity, Jay? Uh, I don't remember. You don't, know if, you don't know if we believe in divine simplicity? Well, you say that not in the sense of absolute divine simplicity. Are we occasionalists? Some. Is Ibn Taymiyyah an occasionalist? Ibn Taymiyyah's position seems to be that uh, created causes actually happen, uh, but God can also reverse them, uh, but he doesn't seem to affirm a strict occasionalism. Okay, so is he an occasionalist or not? You don't know? I just answered that. Does he believe in secondary causality? Uh, he says that they're not uh, necessary, but God can change them. Does he believe in secondary causality? It's a basic term. I just answered that. Yes or no? Does he believe in secondary causality? I just answered it, dude. You didn't answer it. I did. Does he believe in secondary you, causality? You want me to read you his position from the book? I just asked you, does he believe in secondary causality? It's a yes or no question. I'll give you a chance to respond, Jay. We've run out of that seven minutes. Okay, yeah, no problem. Yeah, the best of my understanding of his position is that he thinks that there's uh, there is real causality in the world. It's not uh, it doesn't operate apart from God's will and that if God wills to, he can do a miracle or do something differently. So I'm on. I, I mean, I, I couldn't figure out what exactly his position is because I think it's a bunch of contradictions. So 